Hello everyone on today's webinar. My name is uh, Yiji Walek. Uh, I'm a VP of uh, Product Management at Newvart. And uh, I have a pleasure to run today's webinar, uh, What's New and Noteworthy in Newvart 24.1. We'll be, uh, let's see, speaking mostly about the great new capabilities that we have recently launched. Um, it will be highly, let's say, uh, live webinar where I'll be showing the, the features live. Uh, I'll be, let's say, explaining what are the key motivations, why we invested into those new capabilities. And please don't hesitate to ask questions anytime using the Q&A panel of the GoToWebinar platform. I'll be going through your questions uh, at the end of today's uh, presentation. Uh, the webinar will be, let's say, 20 to 30 minutes long um not because we don't have anything to announce but i just uh, believe that it's uh it's better to uh, to stay focused on the on the key values and then have more space for your uh potential questions so uh 24.1 is the uh, second release this year as you know we have the the quarterly releases we have started with 24.0 in january and we have uh, recently launched the 24.1 uh, we follow the Agile software methodology, so once the features are developed, uh, completed, and, and verified, we immediately uh, launch them during the, the year. We don't wait for major releases uh, once per year or anything like that. And the first feature or new capability that I want to speak about are bookmarks. As you see, I'm not, let's say, using the, the, the PowerPoint to drive my presentation today. I would like to highlight to, to each of you that we push our information to our blog post. So I'm, let's say, driven by this What's New and Overthing blog article that you can find on our website if you would later like to, to get uh, to, the, to the content that I'm presenting today. So let's speak about bookmarks. You know, bookmarks are almost as old as as, uh, as as internet or world wild web uh the bookmarks has been here typically personal bookmarks uh, that you use to to remember a specific page in your browser i remember there were solutions for shared bookmarks which was a great solution or server side bookmarks so you can bookmark it and you don't lose it with your browser or that uh, the bookmarks that are let's say uh uh, shared between different browsers or computers but you know uh, one thing which which we think was always missing on the uh, in the in a, in a traditional concept of the bookmark was that uh, the bookmarks were always just opening uh, a specific URL so you can open uh, a page but you cannot tell the user, where to look on a page so imagine that i am in our crm demo server so that's the server where we typically demonstrate our key features of course i can have a different tips that explains what is on the screen i can actually drive a user through the use case so if i want to create a new account i go through a journey so i should click here click there and fill in the user here uh, but, you know, sometimes it's an overkill. Sometimes you don't want to, to, to document the full process. Sometimes you want just to give a user a hint where to go and where to look. And this is exactly what the bookmarks were always about. So when I want to, let's say, uh, when I want to fill in my employee information, of course, I can have a journey or I can have this bookmark. And this, what this bookmark does, it actually gets me to the page and it tells me that my employee information is here on the screen. So it doesn't just open the page. It also scrolls to the appropriate location of the page and explains me that here is the place where I can put my employee information. Or if I, let's say, need to, to get to the list of accounts, I can just get there and it tells me here are the accounts. So the bookmarks are let's say, simpler to journeys. You don't really go step by step. So the bookmark says, first, they navigate you to a specific place 
in your application and on, on that page it highlights you where to look uh, and they are also searchable so if i if i search for my employee information i don't know if what what i need is a journey or not i just need to to find a place how to provide my employee information and when i trigger it the system automatically gets me to a specific page and scrolls to that page and highlights uh, uh, the, the portion on the screen. We will speak later about some more examples, but from the, let's say, high level perspective, what is really important is that the bookmark is almost like a single step journey associated with a specific URL or it's other type of the of the tip which is associated with a page. Let's have a look how do I create the bookmarks. Okay, so uh, to do so, uh, let me go here to a more complex application. We are in the Siemens Polar infrastructure, which is a complex data platform. And here, for example, in the administration area, I want to uh, tell the users how to add a new work item type. Okay, so uh, I put here a tip or a new bookmark. Here is where you manage, where you can, where you can add a new uh, work uh, work uh, item uh, type. Let's make it bigger. Um, and uh, probably let's put it, um, yeah, doesn't matter, okay. Um, we put it Excel. Um, maybe we should reposition it uh, to the last element here and we put it on the bottom. It's actually a bit better. Um, or even better, we position it really here to this empty element here. Here's where you can add a new work item type. So what we did, we see that the journeys are step-by-step -step guides. The bookmarks are a single uh, step elements. The single step elements, we call them the tips. Now there are two types of tips. There is a hint, which is the traditional tooltip, or there is a bookmark. I created this bookmark where to create a new work item type. Now, anywhere I am, if I trigger the help and I search for a new type, the system will automatically respond if there is any journey or a tip. If there is a tip, the bookmark, I trigger it. And the system automatically gets me to a specific page and tells me, here it is where you can perform your, uh, your task. So here, what you see uh, is that instead of explaining user how to get to this page, we get the user automatically here. So remember, this is what we very often repeat that the there are two principal goals of the digital adoption platform. Let's say initially we speak about initial onboarding, about training. So the concept of learn by doing. So instead of, the, instead of reading the manuals, uh, reading the PDFs, we train the people in the application itself. The second important goal and I think that from the long-term perspective, probably even more important is to make the people more efficient users of the target applications. So it means that even that I know uh, how to get to the administration, I will provide just a shortcut for a specific action. In this case, I'll automatically get the people to the right place and the user can just start performing his or her use case. So in this case, we don't really train the people how to get to this page, 
but we get the user there. We automate the process, we make it faster, we make it easier. And also, frankly, I mean, you can have a onboarding training journey in the staging environment, and then in the production environment, you add such a quick bookmarks for the repetitive actions, just to make it easier to get the users to the, uh, to the specific pages. Now, because things are connected together, let me go back to, the, uh, to our blog post, because the second thing that we want to highlight is the enhancing URL processing control. This is important to empower the content authors. And for those who have been with us last release, uh, we, we concentrate a lot, not only on the training, but also on this automation, on how to make users more efficient, how to uh, uh, make people finish their operation faster. And to do so, we often need to, to work with the, with the URLs because we run in a browser and the browsers are managed very often by the URLs. So, you know, uh, we have implemented in the past the concept of the so-called uh, URL processors. So if you go here into our uh, Polarium, next to the, uh, next to the uh, here, we see that first in the administration area, and that's not a new functionality. I'll speak about what's new in, in, in the short term. Uh, there are different plugins, and one of the plugins is the Polar URL processor. And this Polar URL processor has been actually enabled on our site. Okay, so here we see that the URL processor is this Polar URL processor is, is enabled. What does it really mean? In, it means that when I have for example, this bookmark, to add a new type, or when I create a new journey, how to add a user. So let me do it, okay? So I add a journey, uh, add a new user. And the journey will have just two steps. The first step will say, uh, first we get here and we'll say, uh, users are managed on this page we put it here to the to right and the second step will be click here to trigger new action so we have created a, a journey again if i start a journey tells me here is where you manage the, the, the users and click here to add a user. Now the, the, the URL processor means that you can deploy for specific applications which are contextual a smart behavior. What does it really mean? That I can be in a different project. Let's go to a different context. Uh, now I will go to the to a different con context. Okay, we are in the URL. We see that now we are in the project called eLibrary. If you run the same journey, let's run it. We are we stay in the same context. So it tells me users are managed on this page, and you can continue here. If I am again, if I switch my my project, you see that. I'm here in a drive pilot project on, a, on any page. When I trigger it, it tells me, hey, go here and, and here. So what it means is that we get a user to a specific page in the same context. The same applies to, the, to these bookmarks. We are here on any page and I click, hey, add a new type. If I click, I get to the page where I can get a, add a new type, and this page is contextual. So if I'm in a different project and I trigger the journey, you see it's I stay in the same context. So the URL processor enables me uh, to, let's say, augment 
or control what URL will open when I run the journey. So when I'm a content author, I set up a journey in one specific context. So I did create my journey in a drive pilot project, but when I'm running the journey, the system automatically recognizes that I'm in the e-library project and it navigates me to a different, uh, different URL. So this, I'm showing it on top of this Siemens <coughs> application, but in, in, a real, in, in reality, you can deploy, deploy a different type of URL processors. So first we provide APIs to, let's say, to make it easy to enable different proce URL processor for different applications, because this is really quite complex behavior, or you can use a so-called generic or let's say uh, a processor that can apply for many different apps, which is controlled by regular expressions. But, you know, so far in the previous releases, uh, there was one limitation. And the limitation was that if I had this uh, site, I was able to enable my URL processor. And then it means that all the behavior uh, was processed. So when I run a journey, it always runs it in the context of a, uh, of a current project. But now, what if I want to, let's say, have a journey that add a user to the e-library project, not to the current project, but to e-library project? Or let's have it even better. Let's say I have my drive pilot and our journey add a new user Let's rename it to add a new user to drive pilot project. So you want to make sure that when this journey will be executed, it doesn't run in the current context, but it is really global. So the context is static. And for that, we enable the, the new switch on the journey level to use the URL processing on a specific journey. So one hour when I disable it, what it means is that if I'm in a drive pilot project and I run it, it, it still works the same. But it, if I will be in a different context, for example, here in my e-library, and I run it, you see we switch, we enforce navigation to the drive pilot because we disable this smart URL contextual processing. So with the new functionality that we are launching, and, 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 and sorry for that, it is a bit tricky and technical because we are now really speaking about a very advanced digital adoption solution concepts where we no longer just, let's say, concentrate on the guidance, click here, click there. We really want to make sure that we enable the users to be as efficient as possible. So we need to provide to you, to the content authors, a possibility to define a different asset. So sometimes the journey should be, uh, let's say, global. So when I, whenever I, I, I trigger it, I get to a specific page. The page is global. Uh, you enforce add a user to the drive pilot. Sometimes you don't want a user uh, to be or you want a user to stay on the current page that's why you can all, uh, always delete the the let's say the url completely and then the journey stays on the current page or you can use the url processors to enable the smart url processing it was possible even before but newly i mean the, there is also a way to override it on the level of each journey and then I mean, you specify whether the smart URL processing should be used or not. And this doesn't apply to journeys only, but also to, uh, to bookmarks and tips. So especially with these new bookmarks. So the, the bookmark, as I said, it's a, it's a one-step asset which gets you to a specific place. Like here we have this, uh, how do I add a new work item type? And again, it can be... Uh, contextual. If I go to e-library, I run it, 
I get to a drive pilot. Why? Because very likely uh, I was in this context. Okay, so uh, that's the in a in a, in a nutshell what uh, how these two features are connected together. That the bookmarks are the uh, the, the the traditional bookmarks that you know from the browser augmented with an option to highlight were specifically to look on the screen so it doesn't just get me to the page but it actually tells me where to look on the page so when i search for employee it gets me to a different page to the user's page but it also tells me have a look here on that portion of the screen have a look on this pie chart fill in here the password so that's what the bookmarks are they get me somewhere and it points me where to look and one additional point of course traditionally the bookmarks were personal something that exists in your browser only here these bookmarks are being shared it's being prepared by the content authors and additional bookmarks and journeys can now be contextual so they can be global to the to the to the target application or they can run contextually in a in a in a in a, in a data slices where the context can be a project department the context can be a a, a tenant uh, whatever i mean is uh, is staying or dynamic in your URL. So far, I was speaking really about the functional improvements on something which is really visible to the end users, like the bookmarks, or to the content authors, like this use or not use the, uh, the URL processor. But uh, <coughs> we are, let's say, living in a, in a highly dynamic environment. We are we need to make sure that NewVart as a solution is aligned with recent changes to the uh, to the web architecture. What I'm saying, uh, privacy and security is something which is emphasized a lot in the last years, and this affects, let's say, all of us. I mean. Uh, software vendors who are developing the, uh, the, the target applications, Salesforce, uh, Siemens Polarium, Jira, Workday, us, the digital adoption vendors that sit on top of these applications, and also you, actually, because ultimately, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's say the privacy and security is, is very often uh, required by different standards like GP, the GDPR, etc. And where the, the world is going is that there are more strict controls about data being shared, transferred from one side to the other. And uh, there is one initiative that we need to highlight to you, which is about third party cookies. Uh, Google is highlighting is a third party cookies. In reality, it's not only cookies, it's also, let's see, it goes beyond that. Uh, but principally, what it means is that uh, if you have a web application like the CRM system, like the Polarin system, we run the new VART, uh, let's say, um, overlay on top of that. And especially when you apply a so-called cross-application guidance, so the journeys can start in the CRM system and go to the ERP system. In this case, the information needs to be shared on which step you are in your journey. So you have the Salesforce and SAP, and you have a journey that starts in Salesforce and continues to SAP. And we need to store somewhere the information where you are in the process. And from the perspective of the browser, that's a third party cookie because this information is neither stored in Salesforce 
not in SAP, it is actually stored in a new world. <coughs> and because we don't push this information to the server, because we value your privacy, we store it on the client side uh, in, in, a, in a cookie. And this information needs to be leveraged uh, on both places. And Google enables the new APIs uh, for that. And they also discontinue the access for these third party cookies uh, with the old APIs. What I'm saying is that even without updating your target application like Salesforce or your custom development application, without updating new world, your environment is changing because sooner or later you would need to update your browsers. And the browsers now introduce a new privacy and, and security uh, checkers. And suddenly something that is working today may stop working in the future. That's something that we can control. And actually, we probably all agree that it's a, it's a right uh, initiative to restrict the security and privacy. How we respond to it? We respond to it that we, of course, uh, let's say, uh, align with these new standards. So functionally, we use the new APIs, etc. We release a new version that is aligned with these new APIs. But there is a step on your side that even though you don't need maybe to adopt usage of the new and latest functionalities, maybe you don't need bookmarks, maybe you don't need the URL processors, and you say, hey, we don't need it, let's stay on the older version of new world. But you may still need a new world because the browsers are evolving. So we encourage everyone because, again, because of the privacy and security, because of our uh, customers, as I see now in the list from the pharma and medical market, we know that uh, the process to start using a different uh, application requires uh, the classification or revalidation of the software. Uh, and it might be not so easy for you to update, but you still shall do it because the browsers will be updated. And because of that, you also need to update the new world component. For the people that are uh, managed by us, so for uh, for the customers who are managing the data in our cloud environment, we of course automate this update for you automatically. For those of you who are hosting UVART on premise because of your high security and, and, and safety standards, we just, let's say, announcing the fact that we are aligned to these new changes and you shall update to a latest, uh, uh, let's say, version of NewVart and also browser extensions uh, to be aligned with the uh, latest changes to the browsers. So again, you need to update not only because what's new in NewVart, what features we have, what fixes we provide, or for the fact that there is a new version of Salesforce or Workday, but also because the web standards are getting more strict and powerful. Of course, we make our software 100% backward compatible and forward compatible on the data level. So when you update to a new version, everything will work smoothly, uh, also due to our approach, the versioning. So when you have the existing content, when you publish a specific version of the content, the end users will still see the same because the, the behavior is the same uh, or the content is the same. It's still the same journeys, still the same selectors. So you should feel really confident to update to a new new VART version. With the higher and higher number of our customers, it was really important uh, to announce it on this webinar uh, because we see that some conservative enterprise organizations are a little bit late on updating to any latest versions uh, uh, because they think that they don't need to. And that's why from a product management perspective, uh, we have to, let's say, inform uh, you about the necessity to install the new versions regularly. So uh, I said that the webinar will last probably 20 to 30 minutes. We are at the end of the, of the webinar content that I've prepared for today. Once again, just to wrap up, bookmarks, easy to create, one-step instructions, very powerful, shared bookmarks that get you to a specific page and highlights the piece of information on the screen. 
your processing, imp uh, let's say, extended, so you have a more control when are the URL processor applied, very strong for the advanced applications, and alignment with the recent uh, changes to the security and privacy introduced by Google uh, this year, and also what is planned for, for later uh, this year and next year. That's what was new and noteworthy in 24.1, and let's go to the uh, to the to the chat uh, and Q and A for potential questions. Where can we find the behaviors for each of the processor types? So first, uh, the there are outer so. There's a couple of the cases. So first, let's see, the, the, the processors are defined, or we provide API to plug in a specific behavior for a target application, uh, and how NewVart uh, handles uh, the navigation to a specific point in the application. That's what we call the URL processor. Uh, for the for some applications, uh, let's see, the processor is just designed for one application, like the Polarian URL processor is there only for Siemens Polarian. A Tagetic URL processor is just, again, even for one Tagetic application. And then there is a regex pattern URL processor which is supposed to be documented in our knowledge base. It might be that we are a little bit late with this regex URL pattern processor, and that's up to our uh, um, um, support team to, uh, let's see, to educate you how to use it, and also to give you the, the specific uh, setting for the target application. So, uh, the next step is that if you need to handle the URLs for specific apps, mm, let's say in a in a smart way, let the support know, and they will either recommend the setting for the generic regex pattern processor, or suggest what API to use to develop a custom plugin, because we have the API. Uh, that enables you to, to deploy a specific application or specific plugin to a new VARD that is using our APIs. Okay, the more and more we see that our platform is, is, is best on the market to cover any type of a web technology, but still to make it even more robust instead of just making our platform more and more configurable, it's better to use the APIs and instead of configuring the application, customize the application behavior. Uh, so that's why we, we highlight so much the, uh, the use of the APIs. Are the restrictions uh, specified by Google also uh, uh, applying to, to a different browsers? Uh, yes, uh, because actually, if you check the, uh, the, the uh, let's see, the documentation, you would see that it's not actually uh, announced on the level of Google Chrome, but it's announced on the level of Chromium engine, which is actually being also leveraged by other browsers, such as the, the Microsoft Edge and also others. And uh, based on what we have seen is also that the other, let's say that, let's see the overall, the direction is to make the, the web uh, a more safer place. So all these changes are now under the standardization. So uh, we are monitoring it. We make sure that, let's see, you will be uh, covered. Uh, you don't need to actually understand all these details. The only thing what you need to do is just to understand that this is happening 
and you need to regularly update to a latest version of new wire. That's that's what it is. Do you plan to have a personal bookmarks? Um, in general, let's say we are focusing on the on providing an end user with the assets that help him to be trained to understand uh, how to use a specific application to be more efficient by the content that is prepared by the content authors. So on one side, uh, this goes against a bit of the uh, of the concept of personalization. Uh, on the other hand, uh, personalization has two aspects. First, what content do I see? And of course, this can be personalized by the role, by the experience level, uh, by the department, because you can apply the visibility rules to bookmarks, etc. So let's say I can get a personal experience by being exposed with the content that matters to me. The, the concept of, of creating a bookmark and share it with others is now in the responsibility of the content author. But honestly, we are thinking in a direction that, let's say, you know, with journeys, it's really an effort to build it. And this effort is, uh, is, is pretty significant. And we really believe that this should be really in the hands of the, of the content author. Uh, but for the bookmarks, we see that it's as easy to create it, and it would be nice that me as a user, that I would be able to set up a bookmark for someone else, even outside of the editor. So that's something that is uh, something that may come on our uh, in, uh, into the, uh, the the one of the next versions for our application as an optional features, because there are some uh, let's say contexts where the where everything what is here needs to be reviewed and tested and approved and it shouldn't be let's say enhanced with something which is created by other users uh so yes we are thinking about making possible to let's say for the user to create a new bookmarks and even potentially share it with others and if you speak really about that you probably also you, you uh, i mean the, the overall goal is uh how do you create the content so on one side, let's say uh, we, we we think about uh, uh, the content authors that produce the, the the content, they test it, verifies, etc. Then we have the end users. And for information, it's also something that we speak about uh, with our research team on, on our uh, on AI and generative AI. So based on the on understanding the the user behavior in your target application, we can generate some of the content automatically uh, or the, the the generative ai can produce the content on the fly so uh we are definitely let's say thinking in the direction how to provide more content faster to the end user let's check if there are more questions No questions so far. Uh, I hope this means that uh, I was quite clear about the, the benefits and uh, new capabilities, or it may mean that the questions will pop up tomorrow. Then please let us know uh, on the support line, and we will be more than happy to, to schedule a dedicated demo just for you, or uh, you can just, uh, let's say, uh, test it on our test server and, and come back later. Anyway, the webinar has been recorded. We will share the recording with you um, in a few moments. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.